Beethoven or Be Beat Beethoven. Uh, they be 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 the oven. Be be the oven. That's it. oh beef oven. Beef oven. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Beethoven. Damn. Ah, okay. Ba 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 ba. Yeah. Everyone talks about talks big about Beethoven's fifth. Yeah. Moonlight Sonata. Ode to Joy. For Elise. I mean, the guy is just a great composer all around. He's arguably one of my favorites. I would say he is probably top five. Top five, like, classical slash Baroque slash uh, it, it just, you know, the old style composers. I know for you, you say Bach is, like, your favorite, right? Mm -hmm. Bach is up there for me. Bach is definitely top five. Most definitely. I would also say... I would also say Claude Debussy. I knew it. See? Every time. You can't say his name without without someone pitching a little bit of laughter. De, de what now? <laughs> Debussy. Debussy. That's even worse. There's no way you can say his name that's not funny. And I mean, it wasn't the case until like three or four years ago when I started to be because, like, yeah, ever since saying Bussy, all over the internet. You know? Ever since Bussy, which became like, 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 butt, like, booty pussy or boy pussy. Like, that, that's the weird thing, dude. It's like, it, it's weird how vernacular changes the meanings of things. And now you can't say the pussy without people thinking of just like, like, what <laughs> 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 <But> now? <laughs> Shit. But. Honestly, just his one piece. I mean, oh gosh, the one piece. Uh, Claire de Lune. It, Claire de Lune is is one of my favorite pieces by him. Also, um, Chopin's Nocturne. I uh, the, like there are just so many great piano pieces out there, but Beethoven. This is not a story about the composer Ludwig von Beethoven, but no, it's about a gigantic St. Bernard. It's about a gigantic St. Bernard named Beethoven who gets taken in by a family and, yeah. This is the family-friendly version of Cujo. Oh, God, yeah. Dude. Freaking Cujo. But the reason we're watching this is I pointed it out. I don't know why, but I don't remember if it was my mom or someone else, like a family friend or somebody, but somebody gave me the VHS tape of this when I was a very young child, like probably two or three, and oh, I rewatched wow. it a lot. Like, I really liked this movie <laughs> because I just really enjoyed seeing, you know, Beethoven, the giant pupper. Well, yeah, and... and and he's a big dog. I mean, and, like I grew up with a cat at our house named Prissy when I was really young, and so I liked cats because of our family. Your cat. cat. But we never <clears> had a dog. But I think this was probably one of the first movies that I saw that was just like I like that doggy, you know? Yeah. And then, 101 Dalmatians was when I got the Disney one, you know, um, animated it's also version. A good one. Like after that, and like I was like I like these dogs too. And then there was a Clifford the Big Red Dog, and I was just like, I like dogs as well as cats. So that's why I didn't grow up just being a cat person. Like, I'm just a pet person. I love yeah. all the fluffy animals. And as I got older, Nothing I Nothing wrong with that. I love all the animals in general. I don't even want anything bad to happen to sharks, even though they terrify me, you know? Like, I don't Fair th enough. I think it's messed up that people take them and cut their fins off and chuck them back in the ocean to drown. Like, yeah, that's kind of fucked up, yeah, dude. Like, what the fuck? But, I mean, I don't love them the same way I do all the other animals, but, like, I still think they're majestic, and they are they definitely demand my respect. I think they're an important part <clears throat> of the ecosystem as well, you yeah. know, they... There are things that they do. Well, like, that... I like spiders now. Even I'm starting to see that spiders have personality and stuff, and I'm just like, man, spiders are cool. Like people, like really underestimate spiders, and there's a lot of people that just instantly are like, burn the house down. And I'm just like, dude, it's not that big of a deal. I promise you. Yeah, I guess. But, yeah. But Beethoven has Beethoven the movie. I have a very rich history with this film. 
specifically the first two films. The first two films, I think, are really good. The rest of them can just... Don't, I don't even want to think about them. But I never saw the sequels. So. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, don't, I also don't remember anything about it besides the fact that it was a movie I watched a ton as a kid. That, well, that had a big old puppy in it. Well, I remember like the, the family... I remember Charles Grodin plays the dad. He's hilarious. Like, he's a great, like, co- comedic character actor. And he got typecasted as, like, the like the angry but lovable dad in a lot of stuff. And then, of course... Like, I never ahead. knew who he was because I have been watching Always Sunny, obviously, for the past, like, seven, eight, nine years. And they have an episode where they're talking about Charles Grodin in it. And it's like, I love him, man. He brings out the curmudgeon in me. And I never really knew yeah. who they were talking about. And then you just pointed out that was him. And I was like, I had no memory of the fact that he was the dad in this movie, you know? Doug Walker. Malcolm Ray. Tamara Chambers. Rob Walker. <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of people in this. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it? So you don't have to. What's good? I guess I was the perfect age when Beethoven came out in 1992. Aww, that <laughs> I was 10 years old, loved big dogs, and kind of giggled when I saw he was teamed up with the guy who sung a love ballad to Miss Piggy. It was a big hit at the box office, earned several sequels, and even got an animated series based off it. And according to Rotten Tomatoes, is pretty universally hated. Ah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, unfortunately. As a kid, I really? liked it, though. Yeah, I did, too. I mean, I guess I can see someone not getting into it, but has it really earned being disliked? Directed by Brian Levine. I think it's because of what came after. Because, from what I understand, the third, fourth, fifth, and however many films are just hated. Because they are so bad. They are so freaking horrible. Who, if you watch my show, you're very familiar with. I'll totally concede this is probably his best film. But does that make it a good film? I don't know, maybe my memory is fuzzy, but I remember this flick being brutally inoffensive. A kid-friendly film that's corny without being cringy. And a lot of that, let's be honest, comes down to the well-picked cast. Everybody, of course, remembers Charles Grodin and the St. Bernard, but the other performances, while safe, are memorable. They do just enough to make the joke work, but never go too over the top to make it uncomfortable. <laughs> Unless that's the point of the performance. Yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> yeah, that doctor was a dick. That doctor was such a dick when it came to, like, trying to, like, trying to, like, to, mm. I can see most adults skipping the film, but if you saw this advertised somewhere, isn't this about what you'd expect? Okay, it's not Marley and Me, but it's the equivalent of a TGIF movie. I remember Hell, that scene. Now that I see it. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. They just get dragged. <laughs> they think it's over. Nope. Going right back. Cars in it. I personally remember it being fine for a children's flick, but maybe I need to watch it again. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh gosh. Let's go I forgot. Back. I forgot that the two bumbling thieves. You know, the the Horace and Jasper. Like from the Hundred One Dalmatians, the Jasper and Horus of this of this movie, it's played by Stanley Tucci and Oliver Platt. Dude, I love those two so much because uh, Stanley Tucci has had such a crazy career since this film, such an amazingly like because he's been in everything. And I actually don't know who that is off the top of my head. Here, I'll show you. I'll show them to you, and when you see him, you'll be like. Oh, wait, you might, because you'll probably recognize a few things you've seen him in. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically he has been in, he was in the Hunger Games. He looks a little familiar. He was, yeah, he was Caesar in the Hunger Games. Okay. Yeah, he was also, uh, see, he was also in uh, The Lovely Bones. He was in The Devil Wears Prada. I haven't seen it. He was in Easy A, Captain America. I feel like I went and watched Julie and Julia with one of my exes. Oh, he... Oh, God, I forgot. Yeah, he's in Spotlight. He, he was fucking awesome in Spotlight. Yeah, Spot- I haven't seen most of his stuff, but I didn't see The Hunger Games. 
Yeah. Obviously, I've seen Captain America. And, and well, and he's a he's a tremendous character actor, and the fact that Beethoven is where a lot of his like like he's in Beethoven as a supporting role, and he's gone on to be in so many big films. But and it's been after he's hit forty, like uh, at like he hit forty, and then all of a sudden he started getting all these roles. It's amazing, dude. Like just. A sec- you talk about a first half of your career spent like in the dregs, like in the supporting role stuff, where you just get constantly served shit, and then in your forties, like in your second half of your career, you literally get a limitless amount of just great roles. Also, I didn't realize that his wife died in two thousand nine. That sucks. But yeah, sorry. I just really love Stanley Tucci and Oliver Platt. Oliver Platt's awesome as well. He's he's been in a lot of movies and he's he's a, a, he's actually one of my favorite inside jokes in the movie Chef. Don't know if you ever seen it. It's I still haven't got to see it yet. God, such a great film about about, about food. I know um, Bab- Babish likes it a lot, doesn't he? And that's the funny thing is that uh, Babish is uh, is actually that character. Uh, the the name Babish comes from Oliver Babish, a character that Oliver Platt played in the West Wing. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, and the, <laughs> it's kind it's kind of it's kind of like like a little syn- like a little synchronicity thing that works. I think that's hilarious. Back to a time when everybody loves Raymond did a crossover with the X Files. This is my Baby. God. The film opens with Oliver Platt and Stanley Tucci as two bumbling dog smugglers. Admittedly, not a good start. As our main villain, a veterinarian named Dr. Varnick, played by Dean Jones, says both the creepiest and non-creepiest line in any kid's film. I need puppies. <laughs> How is anyone supposed to react to that? Imagine this guy walking into an animal shelter, somehow constantly backlit exactly how you see now, and he says, I need puppies. Would yeah, you he's lit like he's puppy? from the freaking reanimator or something. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a very... It's creepy. terrifyingly lit for a kid's film. <laughs> yes, like, I need puppies. Puppies are the key to my reanimation serum. Yeah. Basically. If anything, you'd just be like, I need puppies. Puppies are the key to everything. Yeah, that that would be something that I think would work. You're afraid of snake arms might bite you. I grew up with Dean Jones in a lot of Disney films, which yeah. is usually the main character, but often teamed up with an animal sidekick. He plays this role. I like remember seeing the covers everything. of like every single one of those movies at the movie store, but I never watched a single one of these. <laughs> I see. I've seen a few of them. I grew up with Dean Jones uh, in a lot. Yeah, I've seen The Love Bug, obviously. You know, Herbie. I haven't. Uh, yeah. Not a Disney film. Whenever Remember the Herbie movie came yeah. out, people were like, oh, they're finally making a new one of these. And I was like, I have no idea what that is. Seriously? Yeah. Dude, I grew up on the Herbie movies back in the day. Dude, the hilarious one with Buddy, like, the scene with Buddy Hackett, uh, the Herbie starts to come apart at the seams, and literally, like, the back end... Starts like like the front end of the car is still driving, but the back end is like attached by just the frame, and it keeps like blocking the cars behind him. And then eventually, at the end of the race, uh, the car splits in half, and then the hind part of the car crosses the finish line first, and it wins the race. And it, it's a hilarious and really cool stunt that they pulled off to make that work. Just just the fact that it worked was was really cool. He's usually the main character, but often teamed up with an animal sidekick. He plays this role like he wanted to eat every single one of those sidekicks. He is literally a vet who tests weapons on animals and loves the hell out of it. In most movies, I'd say that's pretty stupid, but because it's Dean Jones lit like a Marvel villain with his stapler guy glasses, talking like a bear (laughs) choking on Patty and Selma. He'll be a little groggy this evening. It's some of the most enjoyable silly in the movie. The rest of the film isn't quite as Dr. Giggles-ish as the credits roll, and we're introduced to Beethoven as a puppy, who's not having the best luck finding an owner. I got a junkyard. I need a big, mean junkyard dog. Man, he will really be. messed her up with that sculpture, didn't he? Oh, wow, <laughs> dude. 
He pissed at her because really there's no way the scene could go, and we cut to our burglars breaking in at night, stealing the puppies. This is done just as the writer's credit is revealed. Edmund Dantes? Wow, he must have written it in his shit while staying at the Chateau d'If. <laughs> wow, okay. That's, that is... If you're wondering why cut. the Count of Monte Cristo wrote this, it turns out it's a pen name John Hughes used to use. And yes... That explains everything! Yeah. That explains literally everything! Holy shit! The whimsy and the... Oh, God. It was very important to type into Google very why much. was John Hughes Edmund Dantes when he wrote Beethoven. It sounds like a drunk man lives. <laughs> it turns out he did this whenever he thought he was writing weaker material. Which is a great time to bring up. He left his name on all these movies. <laughs> <laughs> now yet again, as a kid, I like it. I like Flubber. I did too! But as an adult, I hate it. Same thing with Home Alone 3. I thought it was funny as a kid. Now as an adult, I'm like, this yeah, the is... The very first time I rented and watched Home Alone 3, I was like, that was not bad. That was not bad. And then I got a little bit older, and I was like, that it was, was bad. trash. Yeah, Baby's Compa Day Out. Compared to the first two especially, that oh was my garbo. God. Well, yeah. Then, of course, Baby's Day Out. Yet another stupid freaking movie. Mm. And I've never seen Just Visiting. I feel like I saw Just Visiting in theaters, and I have no memory of it. Two of the dogs escape, including Beethoven, and he roams the neighborhood stumbling across the Newton family, with Charles Grodin playing the father, George. A part of me does feel bad because this guy has been some of the best films ever made, and he's mainly known for this. That's unfortunate, dude, because, look, Midnight Run is awesome. So is Rosemary's Baby, so is Heartbreak Kid, so is Catch-22, but... God, the fact that this is that this is the peak of his notability as an actor. Hell, most of the headlines when he died labeled him as the star of Beethoven. Oh, that, yeah. Sad that he passed away, but hey, man, 86, he made it longer than most people did. Mm. And not only that, but, I mean, what a career. What a fucking career. But he really does play the part perfectly. Never going too big or too subtle. Just look at this reaction when the paper boy gives him literal bad news. <sighs> Aren't you excited to spend a movie with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the family isn't bad either. Again, very sitcom-y, but a harmless sitcom. The director did have an issue hiring Bonnie Hunt as Alice as there was an almost 30-year age difference <laughs> between her and Grodin. But producer Ivan Reitman said the chemistry was too good, and much like the main couple in Jurassic Park, both these dudes look a lot younger than they really Yes! Yes! Charles Grodin, right? Like, he was born 1935, for God's sakes. And he's starring in a film. Like, he's, he's almost 50 here, dude. Damn. Yeah, look at him. He looks like a he looks like a dad in like his early to mid thirties. Yeah. And Bonnie Hunt right here, I think Bonnie was uh like twenty seven or twenty eight here. I can't remember uh, her age directly, but yeah, I mean they fit as a couple. They fit. I mean, anyway. They are. If you can believe it, Grodin was fifty six when he made this. Oh, 56? I would. Man, my math was off big time there. Sorry. Idea. I'm 41, and I look older than him in this movie. <laughs> Beethoven sneaks into the room of the youngest kid, Emily, and the family thinks George bought the family a new pet. Mom, look, I dreamt I had a puppy and it came through. Ew. That line sounds weird as an adult. I dreamt I had a puppy and it came through. I dreamt Huckleberry Hound was the father and I might need to see a therapist, but still a puppy. That is a really weird way to view that, good sir. Da yeah. I dreamt I had a puppy, meaning I own a puppy. I, own a puppy. I was given a puppy, you know, petting puppy. Not mm, Doug. Doug, that was weird, dude. How was the father, and I might need to see a therapist, but still a puppy. Okay. As you'd imagine, George is less than happy to have a dog in the house. Sniff. They lick. They chew. They drool. They scratch. Alice, they have parasites. Oh God, yeah. Reitman was correct. These two really do have a believable chemistry. <laughs> they work really well off each other, even when they tried to throw each other under the bus. How should we handle this? Go tell the kids. 
If anything, it'll put our pet ducks back in order. Look, they're so terrified. They're frozen in place. When George tries to tell them they can't have a dog, it goes about as well as you think. I mean, I've decided. I knew it. I knew anyone who bought me a nightgown from the Waltons wasn't going to let me have a pet. <laughs> you better think of something to name because when I come home and he destroys my house, I want to know what to call him. He does change his mind, and they try to figure out what to call him. Well, I don't think words for parts of the body make really very good names. But he's got one of those I looked. Okay, admittedly, a lot more people would like this film if it was just called Prick. They decide on Beethoven because he barks to Beethoven's music. I don't know, the writers from the 1800s make sense. And as he continues to grow, George's <laughs> patience shrinks. Oh, another one of those rainy, perfectly sunny days. What, did the paper boy knock your sprinkler on the roof? Where's that water coming from? No, 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 the Beethoven. So yeah, okay, this isn't that funny a scene, but I like watching it because I like watching Grodin. Yeah. His misery is just fun to watch. I feel like that's why I put up with a lot of stuff I've seen in this. <laughs> Isn't that a familiar sight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always sitting at the table, you look down, who's sitting right there, ready, just like, ready to pounce at anything you put near his face. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm just like, and I'm like, every time I look at him, I'm just like, go lay down. Yeah, I'm like, go lay down. And then he, like, walks two feet away, spins back around, just lays down. That makes sure, and he makes sure that he makes the most amount of noise, just plops down. And just, yeah, he plops down. He's like, oh. Yep. Oh. <laughs> he freaking sighs and pouts. <laughs> I love him to death. He's such a good dog, but, uh... That is so relative. Million times, I legit like these actors and buy them as a family. They're the people you hang out with. Okay, when all the other people you hang out with aren't around, but you're friends with them for a reason. You still like them. Ladies and gentlemen, the screen debut of Joseph Gordon Levitt. That's right. The debut of Joseph Gordon Levitt. <laughs> Beethoven tours the town that's so friendly to dogs, you'd swear Italian stereotypes will go bonkers trying to get him to bang, and we see he's still friends with the dog who originally broke him out. Thanks. What do you say about helping me find a home? Can help you. It looked like you had a nice place to stay. Can help you. I saved your life. Oh, you know better. <laughs> Meanwhile, at George's air freshener company. God, I don't want to put my hand up there to find the red flag. He tries to. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same thought as a kid. I'm not joking. Double Dare was such a great show, and that was one of the that was one of the trials. You had to find the red flag. Up the nose that was just filled with green slime, and it's like it was so, like, dude. I miss being in the nineties. We talk some investors, played by David Duchovny and Patricia Heaton. I could use that in my beamer. I could use it in my beamer. Well, we feel a lot of people could use them in their beamers. <laughs> Can we not talk about putting things in people's beamers? You weird dialogue. His son Ted is mocked by some bullies, though do they really have much to make fun of him for? I know I've seen this kid high-five some weird things a lot of McDonald's ads. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and then of course, not only that, but he was also in Rookie of the Year, and he's the one that got jealous. It's like, oh, you broke your arm. I'm mad at you. It's like... Beethoven scares them off, letting Ted take all the credit. <laughs> That's a great impression of how I look greeting myself in the morning. Uh, I look at myself in the mirror every morning and my mirror breaks. God, you want to know why I'm so low on money? Because I have to keep replacing my mirror. Don't think I can show this scene without Maybe playing this clip. Maybe you should just stop replacing Someone's it. kissing me. It must be a beautiful woman. Now, I'll make sweet love to you while keeping my eyes closed the whole time. We talked. The most rewatched scene by Zoo File since Gene Wilder said hi to a sheep. Oh. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, you got something nice to send to a loved one. That's really cool. Why don't you just go ahead and... Oh, no. Well, I really thought it would be easy, but no. Uh, mailing is hard. Life is hard. I, I can't lie. Uh, yeah. You don't even know how to open the box, dog. Of course he doesn't. This is Some an ad skills, man. This is an advertisement. This is an advertisement. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, how do I make things like 
like active on the screen. This this thing that they gave me to make Dang. active on screen doesn't shit. work. Confusing uh, remote buttons. Uh, hold on, hold on. It doesn't work. Hold on. Ah! No, it doesn't work. Might work better now. Uh, wait, I know. Hold on. Red thing on back. If me click over, it turned green. It worked now. Ha! Huh. What? I was just doing all of acting like a guy in a commercial. Thing. Sorry. I can't live today. No, all those people in the infomercials were right. I can't things. But you know, shut up, because they're stamps. I mean, most of us may not even think about the person stamps. on the sending end of our, our packages when we shop online or, or sending out a gift <laughs> or something. Unless, of course, Doug, are your fingers made of friggin' like Play-Doh? Like you can see him smiling a little bit because he's just like, I'm so fucking stupid. He's like, this is so dumb. <laughs> but hey, man, if it pays the bills, I can't. I, I can't speak against it. It's just like here. I mean, you know, our. Uh, by the way, our sweet, sweet Valencia theater seats. You know, the ones that allow us to recline back and enjoy. Watching movies and stuff down here. It's technically, this is really a pays the bills deal. This is a pre preventing a bill for an upgrade to kind of deal, isn't it? I guess, yeah, but it's like saving us money on having to upgrade seating in the future and have better seating. Basically. But still, the fact that they sent us this as part of a brand deal and it's very legit. Oh, it is, yeah. and the fact that how much these costs still blows me away, and. The fact that they have deals right now where you can buy uh, chairs like this for a, uh, you know, and they do do financial plans, so you can do, like, agreements where it's, like, you pay over the span of, like, two years. That is if you want to, and you can pay it off early. There's no, there's no like, fee or anything like that for you paying it off early. Anyway. Now, let's go. You're the one doing the package. Just look how hard this is. So today, in partnership with Stamps.com, I want to take yeah, a second to pack... An order with you, and, and you can just see how difficult oh, this is. So I just close. want to send this out, and, and, and oh, it's not oh. because it's important to remember that literally every time you get a package from a small business or just or just someone really smart like me, someone had to take time to pack it, tape it, and mail it to you. And you know, stamps.com, they make it easier, a lot easier, darn it. Because Jeesh, using the free scale stamps.com provides you to weigh your shipment is really helpful, and using the rate advisor to calculate the most affordable method to ship, also good. And the dashboard where all the shipment info is stored? Thanks, stamps.com, you made this less bad. Why don't you just like do it slowly? Like, like don't overthink it. That's good. That's real good. Okay. I have stamps.com to thank for that. So next time you order something <laughs> online, take a second to appreciate the person who packed that order for you. And if you're on the other end of that order, give stamps.com a try. Because right now, you can go to stamps.com slash nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. That's stamps.com slash nostalgia. And boy, that sure worked up an appetite. Why don't I have myself a snack? Oh no! No, 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 I can't food. No, it, it, it's not happening today. It's not fooding today. Well, you can try forever to figure out this advanced science, or you can use DoorDash. Missing the syrup for your pancakes <laughs> just ran out. A double advertisement. Yes, I use DoorDash. Of your favorite coffee I've used DoorDash. With DoorDash grocery delivery, I have you used can get DoorDash, with... but I, I don't use it anymore. Really afford to use DoorDash. I don't. I don't do it anymore because it costs way more money to both tip the driver and for all the fucking fees and charges they charge on top of your food than it costs to just go get it yourself. Yeah, like, I opt to whenever just go gas get is cheaper than like doing something like that, like it's kind of like I can't afford to be doing that very often, if, almost ever. What you want, right when it's you like need. the cost of an entire another two man. meals to get one meal. Jesus, I I haven't drop. used DoorDash since like I've started feeling better. <laughs> sorcery because you've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. That looks so difficult guy who's not me even though I, I might have said it was me before but but it's not. It's uh, another me. I, 
Yeah, how's this work? You'll get exactly what you ordered, or we'll make it right. So sit back. That turned himself into, into a just into a like you into a corner yourself. there. Want even more value, you hopeless so and so? You can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a zero dollar delivery fee on all eligible orders with a DoorDash membership. <laughs> with easy substitutions right in the app and best in class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. That's good, isn't it? It's very good. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $10 value when you use the code MOVIETIME at checkout. <laughs> That's 50% off up to $10 on a $15 min subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code MOVIETIME. Don't forget, that's code movie time for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. I'm gonna... I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm doing it with DoorDash. Scream. He's gonna scream at the fact he doesn't know how to... how to... Don't adult. Jedi Survivor every Friday on Twitch. We also have content five days a week. Hope to see you there. And now that they allow multi-streaming, now you can stream on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube. Beethoven is taken to the evil vet who sees an opportunity to test a new weapon on larger dogs. There's been quite a bit written about certain behavioral problems with the breed. He suggests the idea that St. Bernards are overbred and can turn on their owner or their family in a heartbeat. First, first snarl, first any kind of weirdness and he's gone. What should I watch for, hun? Is wearing my clothes around the house? I had one night of passion. I mean horror. They get a babysitter for the kids, who I swear is a horizontal flip of Eddie McClurg, who doesn't keep an eye on everyone as Emily starts drowning in the pool while she continues to sing songs. Ah, uh, forgot about this scene. Kid. Yes, that was... That was... <laughs> this scene traumatized me a little bit. So now I remember where I remember this song from. Yeah. You're not into it now, but wait until Baz Luhrmann whores it up, then you'll love it! Oh my god. Well, to be honest, it wasn't really Baz Luhrmann who whored it up, it was, it was, well, Little Kim. Uh, <laughs> but Little Kim whores up everything that she does. But I will say this, it was actually a good re- it was actually a good remake of the song. I mean, plus, I mean, Patti LaBelle's version's still superior. Because it's Patti fucking LaBelle, dude, I mean, come on. Beethoven, of Sorry. course, hears the cries and jumps in to save her. I think my favorite is he can somehow sense she's going to be in trouble miles away even before she falls in. Yeah. He senses going. Woof. After he does save her, she says he has to go back because he'll get in trouble. You better go home now. Mom said to stay in the backyard. Well, that wouldn't give for his tail to knock her back in and say, Oh, sorry, I'm supposed to be in the backyard, you ungrateful bitch. I thought it was gonna die. Now, we don't want you to get into trouble, so we'll let this be our little secret. No. To be fair, she's not exactly the best at looking after kids. You just heard me. Remember that? From what Hook? is that from? From Hook. Uh, uh, she was the... She she screamed like a friggin' banshee in that. Just like the slight, just them showing up on the front door. Ah! <laughs> it was like, Jesus Christ. The babysitter is fired and the investors are brought over to their house for a barbecue. Where thankfully Beethoven understands business trade as he overhears their plan to take over George's job. We pull this off. We go home, new auto air fresheners. Touch it. I believe this calls for a mwaha. After gin and tonics. Just a mwaha then. Okay, moi. <laughs> also, there's passive aggressive and then there's aggressive aggressive. Alicia. Alan. Alan. Can I have a refill, please? Oh, I just love these big dumb animals. Dogs obey so much better than children, don't they? Come here. Oh. Mm. Also, what's with arson going down? It used to be everywhere. Remember arson? Beethoven wraps the leash around their chair and takes him for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> realizing more and more that stop motion stuff that they did back in the day was hilarious how they pulled it off it's ridiculous looking it is but i'll be damned if it isn't if it isn't funny if it's done in the right way yeah or this movie isn't really fun to laugh at but it is fun to watch 
Like, I love when you pause it, you can clearly see how the effect is done, and apparently George and Alice were so shocked, they switched actors in between scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stand-ins. Don't you just love it? Yep. Also, I can't believe I've never noticed it all the times I've seen this scene. Bonnie Hunt, rather than help save these two, instead saves the vegetable tray. <laughs> <laughs> yes! That's so good! <laughs> Well, I mean, to be fair, she does love her. She does love her uh, China, but she hates those people. It's little touch. Again, it's not great, but are you not entertained? I really don't like our dog. Grodin and Hunt again share a really nice scene together, saying the usual stuff you hear in films like this about the overworking husband ignoring his family. But when they talk about it, you legit listen. My dream's going down the drain, and you're worried about a dog. Your family's going down the drain, and you're worried about a dream. Great. At least we see eye to eye. Mm. After the most fake game playing I've seen in a film for some time. At least mine. I get the next one. <laughs> we talked about it. The power glue. How fucking horrible it is. Okay, fine. Get that question block. It's not multiplayer. What are you doing? <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Granted, he could be playing the power glove, right? I've just never seen anyone actually do it. The evil vet drops by, accompanied by his own evil music. Ah, ah, Mrs. Newton. Sorry, our door creaks in the weirdest way. We're trying to fix it. <laughs> he says he's following up on Beethoven's rabies shots, but it's actually an attempt to frame him and make it look like he attacked him. Even though the vet was the first one to strike first. I saw you! You hit Beethoven! Why would I hit Beethoven? Even when he's trying to sound reasonable, he sounds like a pirate gargling hunter as Thompson. Once an animal crosses the line and attacks a human being, you can rest assured he'll do it again. By the way, I'm Batman, or whatever I'm trying to do with this voice. Mm. He says if Beethoven isn't handed over, he'll have to press charges, leaving George with no choice. Where are we going? Are we going to the Happy Factory? Yeah, see, I vaguely be? remember all of this now that I'm... Yeah. Seeing, I couldn't have told you any of this before seeing this recap. No, thank you. I have enough Happy. I also don't think I ever fully understood what is, was actually happening in this whenever I was a kid either. This. I mean, I understood that he was being taken away. Um, here's the thing. We've... My, I remember we had a cat when I was younger, and unfortunately there was a really bad snowstorm, and she got caught outside. We tried to bring her back in and everything, but she got caught outside, and she wound up getting sick, like really, really sick. And I remembered my dad, and my dad getting her bundled up, and putting her in the car and taking her somewhere, and I never saw her again. And for the life of me, dude, I didn't realize what it was. My dad, I guarantee you, took her to the vet. They saw there was nothing they could do, and they, they put her to sleep. Yeah. And you see, as a kid, you don't 100% realize what's going to happen. You just know that, you just know that the, the animal's going away. And I'm if like, you... Why are they taking the puppy <clears throat> away? Like yeah, and then you realize later on why, if that is if they don't come back, and it sucks. It truly does suck, because that's just it's a fact of life that every animal that you own, you are more than likely going to see it pass away. That's like every that's like my mom's dogs. It's just like Lulu, like like. Bella and Rusty, I mean, Rusty, we knew Rusty was sick. We knew Rusty was, you know, mentally not all there. And when he when he started to develop the tumor and everything, we knew that something had to be done. Bella, it was slow. Because I watched her go from, you know, this young pup, being able to, like, leap and jump and run and spin and all this, to... You know, she wasn't able to run like sh as fast as she used to. Then she wasn't able to spin like she used to. And then she wasn't able to jump like she used to. And then pretty soon, like, her bed being up on the futon instead was now down on the ground because she couldn't 
she didn't have the strength to walk up the steps that we'd sat there by the futon mm. to help her up there. And then I remembered it was just before the pandemic hit in 2020. We we had her there and she was laying down on the table and I walked in the room and she leaned up. Like she was laying on her side. She leaned up and her tail started wagging under the blanket. And, you know, I walked up to her and I petted her and everything. And I think in that moment, she knew that this was going to be her last, you know, her last moment with us because after, you know, petting on her and everything, I pull back and then she, like, leans up and she, like, licks me on the cheek and then she lays right back down. And I just... That one, that one hit hard. And then Lulu earlier this year, me, like, me finding her in the in the tube up there that we had for you know it's the tube that the cats play in me finding her in there unzipping it and just hearing her struggle breathing and then trying to take her to the vet's office and then the one i took her to was closed because it was memorial day and then trying to take her to um the one animal hospital the overnight one which was an hour almost like 30 minutes away and just on the way there, her passing away, just, I, it hits you hard the closer you are with the, ant. it hits me no matter what, you know, like, like, we saw this deer get hit on the side of the road, and, you know, me and Kate sort of just had a moment where we, we, we just thought about it for an extended period of time, but then all of a sudden, um, you know, like, you know, we just thought about it. But after the time had passed, you know, it was it was over. But when you're close to an animal, when you've grew up, when you've seen the animal grow up, much like these kids have grown up with Beethoven, you know, they don't want to see him go. Yeah. I try to keep it in mind. It's the same quote that actually made me less afraid of eventually dying one day. But a life without loss is one without love. That's true. Which I believe that. You just try to keep in mind, like, yeah, it's painful when you lose something, but that means you love something and that's worth it. Like Well, especially if you love something more than you love yourself. It's worth it to love somebody somebody and some like, you know, animals and stuff. Even though you're eventually gonna lose them, it's still worth it to It is to love people and pets and stuff. Well it is, and to show an animal that kind of love and to see them the, like whenever every time, they pass away, your sadness <coughs> is proof of how Like, much every time we them. open the door and Asher just goes crazy when he sees us. Yeah. The, I love that. Yeah, he's like, like tail wagging, spinning around, and all that. Yeah, and, well, just like Shorty, like, I missed the crap out of Shorty because we lived with him for a couple of years. And, he, and he's doing good. And I miss him so much. And I keep telling Chad and Nikki, I need to see Shorty. I miss him. <laughs> well, at the new place. He's got a, a yard he can run in, so he's he's a lot happier now than yeah. being cooped up in that in that tiny apartment they used to have all the time. Again, for as silly as the writing is, none of the actors are sleepwalking through this. They're giving the most that's asked of them in every scene. Mm -hmm. I know you won't believe me, but I don't want to do this. Understand? It's not your fault. Seriously, if he kept repeating that and Beethoven broke down in his arms, I would buy it. Oh man. Yeah, Robin Williams. He hands him over to the evil vet and his family looks at him like, well, he just took their dog to be put down. Dog killer. More of that trademark Edmund Dantes writing. On that note, I do legit like this line. Beethoven made this house real. He put the dents in it. To be fair, the film had more than enough dents without his help. <laughs> They have a change of heart and go back to question the vet about what happened, only to find out they were duped. You hit me, I'll have you put in jail for assault and battery. Uh. Whoa! Dad. Really, hon, I never found you more attractive. I mean, I know our dog might be dead, but punching the guy from the Herbie movies gets me hot for some reason. Mm -hmm. They try calling the cops, but they don't give a shit. Shame, this could have been an amazing crossover. And they Aww. follow the vet to where they're holding Beethoven. If I'm not back in 15 minutes, call the police. You know, they can laugh at us again. Why don't you say you're breaking into a place? They'll oddly enough get them down there. 
Beethoven breaks loose and goes after the thugs, and I'm a simple man. I laugh pretty hard when a guy has a high-pitched scream. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Tucci, once again, <laughs> hilarious. Fucking hilarious. And also tell me he has a crown like I have. Yeah. See, that one nope. tooth that's like, you know, way better looking than the others. He's had them fixed since then. He's had like dent, like a, uh, like dental uh, assistance, like just because his teeth are more uniform now than they were back then. Yeah, I got to get mine worked on again here very, very soon. I got to get mine worked on I need to call too. tomorrow and schedule the appointment before the end of the year. Yeah, so same. Take advantage of what insurance I get per year. <laughs> same. Be reviewing movies in that voice or you'll look like a fool. <laughs> George breaks in just in time to save Beethoven while Beethoven's boyfriend, girlfriend, never knew Friend. Her. Save George. <laughs> when you suddenly realize the only reason they gave him those Coke bottle glasses was to make his reaction funnier when he got bit. Yeah, <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> Quite friggin' literally. That does work pretty well. I wonder how bad it was for him to try and see through those things. I don't know. He, because every movie I've seen him in previously, he never wore glasses. And now here, you see him with these friggin' magnifying glasses on his face. Mm. Jesus. In the nuts. It kind of works. It's cartoonish. Let's drive into the place, resulting in one of the most surreal non deaths in a kid's film. <laughs> Oh, I, I remember that. I remember that, but I didn't register what that was happening to him when it happened to him as a kid. Now that I see it, I'm like, I definitely remember seeing this, but like, I don't even think I registered what a shot was when I saw this movie for sure. Well, you see, where it and syringes... It, I'm just like, holy crap, that's brutal. Where it syringes... It's not as brutal as, say, if it was like a bed of knives yeah. that just got launched at him. And just <laughs> but it's still brutal. It's oh, it like, is. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Great, I'm going to be pissing Skittle colors for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven is reunited with his family. The thugs try to escape but get caught in a junkyard that honestly I always wondered if this lady owned. I think it's the same. Oh, Dobermans. We'll be reunited in the imposters. Yep. <laughs> of course, nobody dies, though granted, it is kind of worth it just to see this shot. But there is the question of what's to be done with all the other dogs. Good night, Murphy. Good night, Sally. <laughs> And unfortunately, they never touch on that in the sequel. Mm. I think, I think if anything, they're holding on to them until they can get homes for them. Because that's what my mom did. My mom, my mom, God bless her. She, if there are, if there are these people that she knows who are getting out of like the uh, the Sphinx business, you know, you know, owning Sphinx or anything like that, and they don't want them anymore, mom will literally take them in and hold them for hold them for them. And look for new homes for them with, like, good people who want them. Yeah, makes sense. Yes. And that stuff, like, uh, pets are your, like, they're they're a full-time commitment. They aren't just something for you to get. It's just like these shelters. I, I applaud the shelters who is like, yes, we have black cats, but we aren't, but we aren't giving, but we aren't currently homing them right now. During the Halloween season, because so many people get a black cat just to have it during Halloween and then get rid of it. It's like yeah, which is messed up. That is so fucked up. What is wrong with you? It's a commitment. You own it. You own it, and you keep and you honor that commitment. And you don't. And I was just like someone gave away Bilbo to Kate and Kate. Oh yeah, and, and Bilbo is such a great he cat. He's the dude. sweetest kitty. He like, is. I can't he, believe anybody would want to get rid of him. Like he's a bit jumpy, but that's okay. Mm. He's a bit jumpy, but dude, once you get him and you know you get him in your arms and he just like lays down and just lets you pet on him, dude. It's it's so it's so pure and just so sweet. He's also convinced he knows how to type on my keyboard. <laughs> And then, of course, Vega. Vega's also another really, really good cat. Mm -hmm. And he was a street cat yeah, for a long well, time. Somebody w no, he wasn't a street cat. Somebody was just going to leave him when they moved out of their house. That's so messed up, yeah. dude. And I'm just like, dude, he's so sweet. Why would you do that? And he had another cat with him that, like, 
was kept inside the house, and clearly they didn't give a shit about their animals. Because the cat that was kept in the house was traumatized. Damn. Well, uh, that's... My buddy and his girlfriend mm. uh, kept him. They ended up keeping him as their own cat, and it took them a while to reacclimate him and convince him he was safe there. That's yeah. that's how Tux is, a cat that my mom saved. Mm. <clears throat> he was locked in his room, and they basically like let, but brought food and water in there to feed him, and then never did anything with him. That's that was it. They just sick. left him in there. And... For the life of me, I really wish that, you know, we were able to take him in, but mom didn't feel comfortable giving him to us because he was such high maintenance and high responsibility. Because I of what happened with that. Like, uh, yeah. So I know y'all were talking about it for a while. But, but we are getting two more. We're getting... Yeah, we're, we're talking about... Uh, Jack and uh, Dahlia. Yeah. Jack, uh, Jack is so sweet, dude. He, like, he is, like... He's a lot like Vega, and he he loves attention, and he wants you to he wants you to hold him in a lot of ways. But he's he also just like has his he, he likes to laze about a lot. Mm. And Dahlia Dahlia is Dahlia is just like Lulu. She's big. She's chunky. She loves to she loves to be held. She loves just so, such a good baby. And the fact that we're getting both of them. I am just so excited for, and I cannot wait for it, because this house is already filled with life. It's already filled with so many animals that bring me so much joy, but I'm excited to see how those two do here, and I'm just excited to have them here. Anyway, sorry. Enough gushing about animals. Let's finish this up. Good night, Beethoven second. Good night, Beethoven's third. Good night, saddest Google search I've done asking how many Beethoven sequels there are. Good night, saddest results. And that was Beethoven. I can see why someone wouldn't get into it, but for a kids' film that's over 30 years old, I think it's okay. Yeah. It's harmlessly wholesome. Damn, I'm old. A film that doesn't try to be any more than what it is. If Marley and Me is Toy Story 2, then this is Sing 2. It's in one ear and out the other, but for the short time it's in your brain, it's not a bad stay. Again, most of that is from the acting, which again isn't spectacular, but could have easily been half-assed, and nobody ever really does that. Yes, I'll admit I would have liked it more if it was just <coughs> a story about a big dog learning to adapt to a big family, but even when it does get weird with the evil vet, it's still an entertaining kind of weird. And sometimes, that's okay. I would say the second one, the second one has a more normal villain, but uh, but also the second one just has such it it has a pretty interesting romantic subplot with Beethoven, you know, finding a female Saint Bernard, and then having a litter together, and also it goes over like a divorce that someone goes through, and the and she and the woman is trying to claim ownership of the female Saint Bernard. And keep her away from Beethoven, and uh, it's and it's just and I just like it. Oh, and also, that's right. There was also a uh, a, a subplot with Rice. Given that she was in uh, in high school, she went to a party, and something very bad almost happens. Something very very bad almost happens. I ain't gonna say it, but I will say it was. I can extrapolate. Yeah. Anyway. Not my nostalgia, Craig. And excuse me, someone's at the door. <laughs> I need puppies. All right. So, yeah, and that's just uh, his uh, shout out at the end. So yeah, that was uh, Nostalgia Critics Beethoven review. It really was. That was Doug remembering something so I don't have to because now I remember the movie a lot better without <laughs> having to actually sit down and rewatch all of it. Exactly. It's which like... I just have a lot going on, so that's <laughs> that's I could be doing better things with my time than rewatching Beethoven again right now. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, Beethoven and then, uh, let's see. Critical response, 29. And, uh... <coughs> Charles Grodin. Uh, 
And there's the sequel, which, let's see. And then the second one. There, there it is. Okay. $118 million. It made. Wow. It made. It still wasn't a failure. <laughs> no. And the reviews were just about the same. Uh, <laughs> the dogs carried it. Uh, just as funny and appealing as the first. And, yeah. I like the villain better in the second one than I do in the first one. Well, villains, I should say. Because Debbie Mazar and uh, Chris Penn. You got, you know, rest in peace, Chris Penn. But, yeah. Jesus. The, I wonder if Doug will do a, a video about the second, about Beethoven's second. I'd love to see that. I would. Honestly. Uh, anyway. I think that's going to do it. So, uh, yeah, Beethoven, The Nostalgia Critic. Uh, if you all are interested in seeing more from The Nostalgia Critic, feel free to click his name in the title of the video. And as always, until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.